The quality and truth of our existence depend on our ability to locate and live within the heart. For it is there that God communicates with man. It is there that the new man is born, renewed, and raised up to commune with God. Today, distracted as we are by technological novelties and the cascade of information that comes with them, we buzz about our daily activities, often without even recognizing that this place in the heart exists. When we are unwillingly reminded of it by the abyss that lurks there, we try in vain to satiate it with temporary material pleasures, purchasing the physical world at the expense of our soul. This cycle produces in us the false narrative of the passions, our sinful inclinations, and rouses our anger when our worldly desires are not met. The end of this cycle is spiritual death. If we wish to attain true life and lasting peace, we must travel the difficult road to salvation. If anyone desires to come after me, remarked our Lord, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For narrow is the gate and difficult the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Our journey to discover the heart or back to the heart is much like that of the prodigal son. After all, we demand our life as our rightful inheritance to do with as we wish, and we disperse it over time, day after day, amid worldly pursuits. Eventually, we come face to face with this reality, be it with the death of a loved one, or if we hit rock bottom and find ourselves in the pig's sty, And we are presented with a choice. We can either continue our miserable existence among the swine or return to our Father. This experience, which is often accompanied by great pain, is our discovery of the heart. And when this happens, we must drive away procrastination, forcing a painful change of will. Seizing this moment will set our hearts aflame with repentance as we recognize the imminence of our death and the Lord's judgment. In this state, we achieve what has been called blessed despair of worldly acquisitions, which are all vanities, as it says in the book of Ecclesiastes. Here, our hearts are touched to a certain extent by the punishments of hell. But this is necessary, as Saint Theophan the Recluse says, one who has not experienced such a painful change has not yet begun to live through repentance. This personal hell, which burns the uncultivated heart, compels us to repent of our sins. And the one who experiences this pain should take courage, for when he has endured patiently all the preliminary trials of the spiritual life, then sooner or later, God will visit him. Perhaps we once felt this warmth of heart, but where prayer was sweet, it has become flat. Our prayers are just words. Church attendance is just a weekly obligation. Maybe we desire to return to the heart, but do not know how. It may be helpful, though, if we have not had such an experience, to point out that this warmth is felt radiating from the same place as the physical heart. For our spiritual heart, the organ whereby we meet God, coinheres with our physical heart. This is the mystery of the human being. We are both physical and spiritual. If we are attentive to ourselves, we can perceive this reality even in the most mundane of circumstances. When we are thinking hard about solving a math problem or facts of memorization, for example, we may feel a certain active sensation in the head. That is our mind, which is the instrument through which we complete such tasks is functioning in the brain, but it is our goal to allow the mind to descend into the heart, to filter every external and internal provocation by watchfulness of our heart. When we do this, we can deny entrance to harmful thoughts and only admit what is helpful 
in sanctifying this space, the holy of holies of our being. If we are not actively seeking and practicing this way of life though, some radical house cleaning must take place for our hearts have been hardened and they must break. The church offers us many ways to discover the heart. Our daily prayers were written by holy men and women who accessed this place of the heart. And so praying these consistently over time will lead us there. Repentance or confession is an indispensable opportunity offered to us by the church. For when we bear the shame of our sinful actions before the witness of a priest, our hearts will soften. Fasting humbles the body and strengthens the soul as we're forced by physical weakness to draw upon the heart for sustenance. Prostrations likewise bend low the body and raise high the soul. Physical stillness too, which can facilitate mental stillness, allows us the space to come back to ourselves. That is to come back to the heart. Be still and know that I am God, relates the psalmist. Stillness initiates the soul's purification, writes St. Basil. This exercise is encouraged before prayer by St. Theophan in order to rein in our focus and pray from the heart. Now notice that whereas all of the activities of the world or small distractions, which we call entertainment, require us to place ourselves into something else. And each of these ways offered to us by the church require us to come back to ourselves. The former calls us to exercise our mind in our brain. And so, in a sense, live outside of our bodies in a world of fantasy and imagination. While the latter, the church, calls us to stay rooted in our bodies kindling ourselves within. The church's call to worship and call back to the heart is innately physical. This is why we have icons. This is why we use candles and prayer. As we make progress in each of these practices and in church attendance and reception of Holy Communion, we will find that our heart expands where it could once only house our will and our own desires, we now find that our brother is there and God is there too. Occupancy has been raised from one, ourselves, to a limitless number and can encompass the entire world and so is able to be encompassed by the limitless God. And yes, there may be a time when God enlarges our hearts and allows us a sweet time of communion with him. This is, in fact, the discovery of the heart. But the journey is not over, for the discovery of the heart is just the beginning of man's salvation.